To appreciate fully Harvard's age and historical significance, one should enter the yard by Johnson Gate and pause for just a moment to read at least a part of the inscription, so eloquent of the vision and courage of the Puritan settlers. Inside the yard in front of University Hall, we come face to face with the statue of John Harvard, that rather obscure Puritan minister who had journeyed to the new world for religious freedom and who earned immortality by bequeathing his library of 400 volumes and half his fortune to the Wilderness Seminary. A native of Stratford-on-Avon, the house in which he was born is still standing and is known today as Harvard House. Few traces of 17th century Cambridge remain, but across the street from Johnson Gate in the old burying ground rest members of that heroic band of pioneers who in the midst of danger and private imposing buildings and shaded by stately trees. Harvard's oldest building, Massachusetts Hall, stands not far from the spot where Washington took command of the Continental Army. And in its rooms where freshmen live today were quartered 640 of his soldiers. This was prepared. From 1764 to 1800, Harvard Hall contained the college libraries during the siege of Boston. It is still headquarters, but now of the Harvard Fund. an English benefactor who established the first two professorships. Stoughton, another freshman dormitory named after the witch-hanging judge, was built by means of a lottery, as this ticket from the archives amply proves. In Holden Chapel, a lovely example of early colonial architecture, the great and general court of Massachusetts sat for a while. It was here also in 1783 that Harvard's first medical lectures were delivered. Of the modern buildings in the yard, the most beautiful is undoubtedly the new church, built on the site of the old Appleton Chapel as a memorial to Harvard's World War dead. This impressive monument to those who gave their lives on the battlefields of France with its classic pillared portal dominates the yard and the surrounding buildings. Directories and seventh in the entire world. Among its most treasured possessions are the only remaining book of John Harvard's collection, the original charter, and the earliest diploma extant issued to one George Alcock in 1676. Rumor has it that each student in those days drew up his own degree to suit his taste, a privilege present-day students would doubtless appreciate. Leaving the yard and going down to the river, we find a magnificent group of modern buildings skirting the curve of the stream. Dormitories for the upper classmen. Only freshmen live in the yard today. When the Puritan fathers decided that youth must be prepared to assume the responsibilities of leadership and carry on, 